Hi everyone, welcome to this lecture on mobile and apps. Uh, more and more, most of the way that we get our information and our news and our entertainment is through our mobile device. And so uh, that's what we're gonna talk about today, different ways that brands and businesses and organizations can connect with an increasingly mobile audience. And I wanna start by saying the web is dead. <laughs> And this is a bit of a provocative statement. It was an article that was written by Wired Magazine in 2010. And this really got my attention because I'm a freelance web designer, developer, and this was like, what, the web is dead? How is this a thing? Like, I need a job. So I uh, read the article and it was basically saying that since 2000, uh, the year 2000, web use uh, compared to all of internet use, we've talked about how the, inter the, the World Wide Web is just one of the many things that you can do on the internet. Well, around the year 2000, it took a sharp, steep curve down, downward, and that people were not spending as much time on a traditional desktop web experience as they were uh, years before. And so back in the year 2000, 1999, you would have thought that what is the big killer app? What's the big thing to do on the internet? Well, it's the web. Well, since then, the web has been replaced by, as you can see there, peer-to-peer -peer technology like Napster and Kazaa and all those kind of file sharing systems, and then video streaming sites. Uh, and if you were to look at this graph today, it would look like the traditional web uh, internet usage is pretty far down low um, in favor of apps. Um, and so most of the time that we access the internet and, uh, and communicate on the internet, it's gonna not necessarily be through a traditional desktop web experience, but it's gonna be through our phones. And so today I wanna to talk about a few different options for connecting with people in an increasingly mobile environment. Now, I don't think that the web is dead. <laughs> I think that it is going to change as we move forward. Yeah, people may not be consuming traditional desktop websites as much as they were in years prior, but uh, the way that they're using these websites is changing. And so uh, we're gonna talk about those changes and, and you know why people might use a desktop computer versus a mobile device and why. And so um, just some quick facts about our mobile devices first. 81% of American adults own a smartphone. If I were to take a poll in this class, I would say that probably 99% of students own a smartphone. Um, and just because these things are with us uh, and they can do so much, these devices can really uh, compute a lot more than a traditional computer could even 10 years ago. Um, and so with the high quality of cameras and uh, location-based services that we have, it makes sense that everyone really owns a smartphone. 53% uh, of American adults own a tablet. 67% of cell owners find themselves checking their phone for messages, alerts, or calls even when they don't notice their phone ringing or vibrating. I know I'm guilty of that. Uh, sometimes I'll think I got a call or I got a message or I heard something and I'll check my phone and there was really nothing there. It's these phantom vibrations and rings that makes me feel like maybe I'm a little bit too addicted to my phone because you know in the back of my mind we're all, always thinking of it. 46% um, of cell owners describe their cell phone usage as something they can't imagine living without. And I would say that's somewhat true because uh, a lot of the phone numbers that I need are in my phone. I don't have them memorized. A lot of the photos that I need, uh, a lot of the you know things that I use to get through my average day, I need to use my phone for those things. And so in some ways, we've relied so much on this mobile technology that it is something that we almost can't live without. It knows us better than we know ourselves. 44% of cell owners have slept with their phone next to their bed because they wanted to make sure they didn't miss any calls, text messages, or other updates through the night. And I know I'm guilty of that as well. It's such an intimate part of our lives that really it's important for journalists, media professionals, um, you know, whether you're going into advertising, public relations, um, or journalism, or whatever else you end up doing, to connect with people because this is where people are. They're on their phones. Uh, and so it makes sense uh, as a brand and business to connect with people and know the mobile literacy that exists today. So um, there are different mobile experiences that I want to talk about today. Um, two in specific that I want to talk about as it relates to the mobile web are a mobile website and a responsive website. 
So if you're a company that wants to get in the mobile game uh, and you want to convert your website to be mobile friendly, there's two main options. Now in the next video, I'm gonna talk about apps specifically because that is yet another way that brands and businesses obviously connect with their audiences. But before we get to apps, I wanna talk about actual HTML websites and how they can be converted for a mobile experience. The first is a mobile website. So a lot of websites would take their regular desktop version like facebook.com and convert it to a mobile experience. And Facebook does have a mobile website, m.facebook.com. If you go to that URL, you'll go to the mobile version of their site. Same with Etsy and same with a lot of websites will have a totally separate website built for a mobile experience. Now these are two separate websites. They'll have their desktop version that has all the bells and whistles, and then they'll have the mobile version. That's kind of a pared down version of their website. There are, um, the images are, they load differently. The uh, layouts will be a little bit different. The buttons are larger. Um, you can see a lot of differences between the mobile version and the desktop version. What used to happen was people would just think, well, we have a desktop version. If people just view it on, our, on their phone, that'll be good enough. Well, what happens is people are sitting there trying to zoom in and pinch and zoom and, and you know, try to get into a navigation that's almost impossible to access just because we have fat fingers and we're trying to click on stuff. It doesn't work out very well. And so people were like, well, let's build a whole separate website that caters to a mobile audience. And so the browser will recognize it's coming from a mobile device and it will serve up the mobile version of their site. And so you can see up here in the very top that it has an m.etsy.com, m.facebook.com. These are completely separate sites from the main site and they require different URLs. So there are some pros to building a website that is a mobile website. The first is speed. When you are building a whole website just for a mobile experience, you can make your images much smaller and you can pare down some of the features so that you don't need the full featured um, product and you can pull back some and make it load a lot faster. So speed is a definite pro to this. Also SEO benefits. We've talked about how when you um, Google something, Google indexes every different website and it takes into account things like keywords. It takes into account what alternate Im uh, text is written on each image. Well, all that is fair game still in the world of mobile um, websites. Uh, Google actually favors websites if it notices that it has an M uh, URL in it. And so it may actually favor mobile websites above another website if it was made for a desktop. And so that those are definite benefits. Also the design and the content are optimized for a mobile device specifically. So buttons will be larger, um, forms when you have to fill out a search form or something like that will be larger, text will be larger. And so it's catering to the mobile audience much more than a desktop would. It doesn't require hard drive space like an app might. Instead of having to download a separate app, you can just obviously browse Chrome or Safari. And then it, it provides a, an excellent user experience because of all of these pros, um, because it's faster, because you have images that are properly placed and uh, it's gonna go a little, a little bit faster. It has an excellent user experience. There are some cons to it as well. So I have the School of Journalism and Mass Comm Facebook page up here on the mobile device. There are some cons. It is two sites to maintain. If you're a web designer and the new logo is updated, you have to go to both the desktop version and the mobile friendly version. You have to go to both of them to tweak code and, and they are separate websites uh, because they are different URLs. Uh, it does not give users access to the full content of the desktop. So if, you, for example, you visit the mobile version of the Facebook page, you won't get access to the messaging platform. You won't be able to go into pages and do as much in the pages mobile version, but that you can do on the desktop. The desktop version is the, you know, uh, you know for all the bells and whistles, all the pages, all the messages, all the functionality like marketplace and things like that on the mobile version it pairs it down and it doesn't give you as many features it can be confusing to users as well so if i'm on my mobile device and i'm browsing facebook and i find a url that i wanted to share like a video with somebody i could take that url and and send it to someone like in an email 
But if they're at a desktop and they click on that mobile version, now they're seeing the mobile website on a desktop and it looks really funky. So it can be really confusing to make people wonder, is this a real legit Facebook page? What's going on here? It doesn't look very good. So there are definite some pros and cons to both of these worlds. Uh, but next we have responsive design. Responsive design is you build one website to rule them all. So you have a desktop version and what's written in the CSS is it will detect what size the browser is and it will move objects around to respond to the size of the browser. So that's called responsive design. It's responding to the size of the tablet or the device or, the, or even the desktop. And so this is Vox.com, and here you can see this is the desktop version, which is known as the, the extra large version of their website. You can see that they have four articles on top and then four down below, and on a desktop that looks really nice. As you take the window and make it a little bit smaller, you can see that that first article, the latest news, and the um, first feature that they have there, now instead of being four across in a column, is now in like a one third and a two thirds. And so these blocks are kind of stacking depending on the size of the browser. So let's go a little bit smaller. Uh, and you can see on the left here, that would be like a, a horizontal view for a, like a tablet. And then the far right is like an extra small view if you are viewing it on a phone. And so you're seeing all the same articles, you're seeing all the same content. It's still all the full fledged website. It's just changing form based on how wide the browser is. And this is known as a responsive website. It's responding to the size of the browser. So there are a lot of pros to this. It's cost effective for business. And so if you wanted to take your website and convert it to a responsive site, there's just a few lines of code uh, that you have to add in the CSS. They're called media queries and you just type it in the CSS and it will kind of move your content around uh, based on different sizes of the browser. Uh, next, it provides full content of the desktop site. And so it will, like I said, move things around. It's not a separate website. It's not two separate websites. It's one website. And so that same content will be available on a desktop as it will be on a, on a mobile device. Um, hyperlinks, SEO, analytics, all this stuff will still be available on the responsive website just because that's kind of what's happening in the SEO, you're, already, you're still building in the keywords, you're still building in the alt text for images, and all that is still a go. It doesn't require hard drive space like you would an app, just like the mobile website as well, but in this case, again, it's one app. There are some cons to a responsive website. Uh, images and content must be optimized for both desktop and mobile. If you look back at that Vox example, the image that is used on the desktop version is the same image that you look on the mobile version. Though it might be placed differently and it might be uh, changed in terms of its percentage width and height, it's still the same image. So you have to have that same image for a big nice desktop experience and for the mobile view. And so uh, you have to kind of default to the desktop size when it comes to images, which are way too big for a mobile experience. So it's a little bit slower, and that's why uh, the next bullet point says it's slower speeds. Just because you aren't building a whole separate mobile website, images and content are just moving around. And then you must be meticulous in arranging content for every device type, browser size, etc. So me as a web designer, when I build a website, a responsive website, I have to test it on so many different devices. I have to see how it looks on, a, on a, even an iPhone 8. Uh, I have to see how it looks in Internet Explorer. I have to see how it looks on a desktop, on a big widescreen, on a small screen, on a tablet. Uh, and so there are a lot of trial and error, a, a huge process that you have to go through to make sure that it, it works and looks nice. In the next uh, lecture, I'm gonna talk about mobile apps and how those differ from the mobile web. Uh, but for this, I just wanted to let you know that if you, want, if you had a website and you wanna convert it to being a mobile-friendly website, you really have two options. You have the mobile website and then you have the responsive site. Now the third option, and what a lot of people do, is they build a mobile app. Mobile apps are highly expensive, but they can be very, very good. Uh, as well. So in the next lecture, we're going to talk about mobile apps.